when we look at the history of the US itself when the civil war was happening thousands and thousands of people i'm not sure 50000 100000 people when they died who were they fighting against were they fighting the french indians afghanistanis pakistanis who were they fighting americans white caucasian christian americans are fighting each other so are we going to conclude that america is a you know angry country terrorist country you know christianity is wrong you know bible is wrong white race is wrong no we have to look at the circumstances we have to look at the whole picture we have to look the whole context that's when we can see what is going on mm-hmm. so in the same way in case if you see some muslims in some countries because of the occupation now people are angry and now it's a proxy war in that proxy war people are getting killed we cannot blame islam or the muslim culture or prophet muhammad peace be upon him we blame those foreign powers and those misguided muslims so is the stereotype of islamic extremism a fair stereotype being fair we could say this was christian terrorism we're not going to do that yeah. it wouldn't be fair but you can make a case there because <laughs> when are you going to apologize for the million iraqis that are dead because you lied to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of iraq I mean, uh, Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. How are you guys doing? We're going to be discussing. Are you talking about that Muslims, terrorists, violent? A video that came out recently by Patrick Bent David. Look, if you're easily triggered or offended, this is not the video for you. You are going to get offended. We're going to talk about stereotypes. Now, he's been going in a good direction, trying to bring Muslims together with Christians to combat the sexualization of the children. But in every issue, abortion, Muslims have the lowest percentage of divorces, lowest percentage of divorces. how they feel about abortion how they feel about lgbtq all of that stuff muslims have a conservative belief and other things they're really seeing the benefit of working together with muslims the parents that were rising up against the grooming sexual per- perversion of children were muslim families now there's a particular video and the topic is about the stereotype is the stereotype of islamic extremism a fair stereotype So I'm going to bring out my next guest and we're going to tackle this. It's under the title Are Muslims the Angriest People in the World with Patrick Bit David brought to you by Patrick Bit David and we're going to go ahead and he presented this very nice but we're going to put some things in context. We're going to go ahead and dissect this, look at it, look at the study that he's quoting and give it another perspective with my next guest here on the Dean show, Dr. Sabil. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Peace be with you. is be with you and to the believers and the people out there. Let's start with that. This greeting that I just gave. This is mm-hmm. really profound and deep because when you look at this stereotype is the stereotype of Islamic extremism and then what Patrick Ben David he goes into the different stereotypes. Talk about mm-hmm. the Jewish stereotypes, black stereotypes, Asian stereotypes. Let's get into this video and then we'll see what actually how he kicks it off and then I'll ask you something from there. How's that? Alhamdulillah, let's go. Stereotypes. Are stereotypes accidentally given to different sects or communities or religions or ethnicities? Or is there some truth behind these stereotypes? We have data. Top five countries in terrorism in the last 50 years. Which countries marriage works at? Which religion? Which countries are the most angry? We've got so much different things to look at. But today's topic, a complicated one. We're going to talk about if some of these stereotypes about Muslim is true or not. Okay, so he gets into the stereotype now. particularly regarding Muslims and Islamic terrorism he calls it Islamic terrorism when i opened up the show i said peace be with you and just that that comes to my mind is that how could a group of people who are greeting wishing peace starting with peace uh we are somehow deemed you know the most extreme of the stereotypes So when I saw that study and that video the very first thing that came to my mind brother Eddie is the fact that uh, extremism is an act it can be done by a person of any faith or no faith muslims don't have a monopoly on it mm-hmm. why do i say that because if that is a french study you know french historically they're biased because they have been occupying so many lands they have been destroying so many cultures like in north africa and different parts of the world So when we define extremism and then we include the extremist uh, in this country or anywhere in the world that means that uh, study is uh, going to be flawed if we include the definition in a most comprehensive way for example i mean i would say that every single uh, 
gun violence and shooting in this country is an act of extremism. There have been 500,000 people dying in this country in the last 25 years by gun violence. So that is extremism. So I don't think that study uh, took that into account. Mm -hmm. I would say that the 10 million domestic violence abuses in this country is an act of extremism. Yeah. I would say that study has to take that into account. I would say that uh, the millions of uh, women who have been uh, who have been objectified and the porn industry and the objectification of women that is terrorism on the opposite gender that st study has to take that into account i would say that many of the european countries they have been occupying the muslim lands and also the non muslim lands every single one of them is an act of terrorism the british empire the dutch the french the spanish the portuguese you know for centuries they have destroyed cultures, they have oppressed people, they took away the wealth of the people, they destroyed the countries after country, continent after continent. Every single act is an act of terrorism and, and extremism. So I would include and I would suggest to that uh, French think tank that you guys have to broaden the definition, include any and all of these things, and then we can see who is number one. Here's what I, I think we object to. If you, and I'm sure you agree and Muslims would agree it is not fair to call it Islamic terrorism the same way it is not fair everything you just mentioned right now mm -hmm. people would Christians would flaunt that this is a Judeo-Christian nation you hear this always yeah. right yeah. this is a Judeo-Christian nation so it would not be fair you could say rightfully so now if this is a Judeo-Christian nation that all these are acts because the people live there. They know Judeo-Christian nation. Majority are Christian. Parent, practicing or not, we don't know. But it wouldn't be fair. But we could do the same thing if you want to play that and say, okay, all this is Christian terrorism. Yeah. That, I mean, Islamic terrorism now, you're saying? Right off the bat, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That needs to be classified. How would you classify that properly? Well, I mean, if someone says Islamic terrorism, Islamic violence, or Islamic extremism, I would divide those two words and say this is Islam and this is an act. The theology of Islam, obviously, it's peaceful, it's proactive, it is a blessing to the world, any which way that you look at it. And Muslims are fallible humans. A Muslim can be right and can be wrong. So we cannot judge a faith, the best faith, you know, the most comprehensive, the best guidance of Islam, by the act of a few misguided people. And the Christians would say the same, you know what, don't judge Christianity by the Crusaders, by the KKK, by the Andrew Bervicks, by the homicides in this country, the by rapes in this country, right? By the abortion clinic bombers, by the Timothy yes. McVeigh's, we can go on and on. Yes, I have paper after paper here, right? Yeah. Long list of acts done by the Christians, uh, but we, we should not label them as Christian terrorism be or, or uh, Bible terrorism, right? We should say that these are Bible believers and because they are misguided, they're doing these things. So we wouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Let's of play let's, let's play fair. But I want to I want to commend Patrick because I think he's really going in the right direction. Recently, I did a response to him and he had a Christian. I don't know if he's a pastor, preacher, Charlie Kurt on his program. He also he mentioned something regarding Prophet Muhammad being violent and Jesus being peaceful. One of the reasons they, they tend to be a violent people too is because their prophet was a very violent person. Christ was not, right? God's Basic Training is an optional program for recruits at Fort Jackson. It's run by the Campus Crusade for Christ. It describes its strategic goals as evangelize and disciple enlisted U.S. military members throughout their military careers and build Christian military leaders to influence the nation for Christ. Soldiers brought the New Testament to Iraq as well, this time on the barrel of a tank, as seen in this official photograph released by the U.S. Marine Corps. There are over 25,000 Department of Defense leaders working in the rings and corridors of the Pentagon. This video, titled Christian Embassy, was widely criticized because it was filmed in the Pentagon and included interviews with uniformed officers, including four generals. The video was produced by the Campus Crusade for Christ. Through Bible studies, discipleship, prayer breakfasts, and outreach events, Christian Embassy is mustering these men and women into an intentional relationship with Jesus Christ. 
GQ magazine recently broke a story about the intelligence reports that then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld personally delivered to President Bush. Each day's report began with a militaristic quote from the Bible. Oh, he said that. Okay. Yeah, so that was the first program they did, and then this is an independent solo one. And we've been in touch. I've reached out to Patrick. We're waiting to hear back from him. Patrick, waiting for you. We extended the hand. And this is why it's so important for him to have Muslims such as yourself. We bring him on. I invited him to the show. Would you be willing to go to the Patrick uh, po po uh, podcast? Yes, inshallah. And these are important topics. We should not shy away from it because these topics are so important that uh, people want to hear in a nice friendly way between Muslims and Christians and our Jewish friends that not only the theological points but the points of contention the way that you have brought about extremism and violence and yes anger that Charlie has brought and then we can come to that too. Inshallah. Yeah so this is important that he calls us to the table so he's talking about us but not talking with us. <laughs> he <laughs> should. <laughs> you gotta talk with us Patrick. He, Let's do it but I, I'm, I'm really I, I like the direction. He was very respectful how he opened up here with the stereotypes. But I think now if he gets comes to the table, he sees this. Hopefully this can open up his mind. He's, he seemed, like he said, he, was, uh, he wanted us to be open-minded to the information that he was presenting. So we want you because and all the Christians and others out there who are uncomfortable because they think now they'll see stuff like this. And I think these guys are pretty violent, right? Mm -hmm. They'll think, you know, they'll see the data say, man, these guys are ticking time bombs. Something can go <laughs> off any time. <laughs> no, I'm also really appreciative of, uh, you know, Patrick for opening this topic and presenting in a much more balanced way yeah, compared yeah. to what other people are doing. But let's not just stop it there. Let's extend it more and let's give more justice to the data in a more in the proper context to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when we can do the proper justice and that's when our uh, viewers they can actually, you know, analyze and see uh, the faith of Islam and uh, the background of Muslims. And that was really nice. He met this Muslim and they started getting into a conversation back and forth. And he gives an, his experience that someone that he was going to work for and get hired by, they thought that, okay, they were feeling uncomfortable because he's Armenian. And now the Armenian community or some Armenians were doing this insurance fraud thieves. They were thieves. So mm -hmm. the person brought it up in his interview, and he was fuming. He was upset. But he said, look, give me a shot. Let me prove to you. You got the job. You came. And then he goes on to talk about how he became one of the top guys and et cetera, et cetera. But he said he took this, and he didn't take it personal, and he made something of it. So he wants us to make something of it, and with all the other stereotypes. But before we go into deeper, he met a Muslim who ended up giving him a Quran to give. And this is what I like about Patrick, he actually brought on one of the first Muslims on his program. You know who that was? Andrew. Andrew Tate, yeah. <laughs> yes, I saw that one. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty nice. That was yeah, pretty yeah. cool. And then he gifted him a Quran along with a Bible and some other book. What, what was your impression about that? Well, honestly, I didn't watch the whole show, but I really appreciate it again of Patrick that the, he wants to hear from the Muslim side. And again, so let's not stop at only Andrew Tate listening to him only. Invite us, invite other Muslims and Muslim scholars uh, so we can have a nice dialogue and we can uh, chalk out uh, the differences, theological differences especially. Yeah. And then there are many commonalities. You know, the viewers would be surprised to find out the many, many commonalities, especially of the values that we uphold about the LGBT things which is going on about the morality, about the respect of women, respect of parents, you know, all of these moral values and all these uh, values of decency we have in common. Mm -hmm. So let's also uh, highlight those. That's when we can see, you know what, we can live together, we can work together, and we can make humanity better by God's guidance. Beautiful. Why? There is truth here, but our job on whatever sect you are is to try to change it. So I share this with you to tell you, I've been through it, I don't like it, and I simply want to positively change it. So try to receive today's message in a way where you're open-minded. So is the stereotype of Islamic extremism a fair stereotype? According to a study done by French think tank, Islamist terrorist attacks this account for 39.1% of the lives lost due to terrorism between 1979 
in 2019. And a matter of fact, here's where the top five countries are leading the way in terrorist attacks the last 50 years. Iraq has experienced the most terrorist attacks the last 50 years. So number two is Afghanistan. Number three is Pakistan. Number four is India. And last but not least in the fifth spot, Syria. What do you think? Well, he said a lot in there. Okay, where should we start? Okay, let's start with the last one. So he mentioned uh, this is not just, you know, crime or terrorism to the outside, uh, you know, occupiers. This is like a crime within your own people, like black on black crime, you know, people killing of their own color, own culture and own faith. What I would say is, you know, uh, in the 1979 war between Iraq and Iran, yes, Sunni, Shia and whatnot, but they're supported, they're, there's a proxy war, they're supported by two superpowers. So in almost all the cases in the Middle East, foreign powers, they're supporting two different fractions of Muslims. But why just stop up there, Brother Eddie? When we look at the history of the U.S. itself, when the civil war was happening, thousands and thousands of people, I'm not sure, 50,000, 100,000 people when they died, who were they fighting against? Were they fighting the French, Indians, Afghanistanis, Pakistanis? Who were they fighting? Americans, white, Caucasian, Christian Americans are fighting each other. So are we going to conclude that America is a you know angry country, terrorist country, you know, Christianity is wrong? You know, Bible is wrong, white race is wrong. No, we have to look at the circumstances. We have to look at the whole picture. We have to look at the whole context. That's when we can see what is going on. Because if you just say, you know what, Muslims are fighting with each other, then what? What's the conclusion? If you conclude something, then I can conclude exactly the same thing to the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus. Hindus, there's so many um, caste systems in there, right? They hate each other, these caste systems. Are we going to say every Hindu is wrong or the Hinduism is wrong or the Vedas are wrong or the India is wrong? So we just cannot. This is really simplistic way of what, you know, Patrick is saying. So we need to do more, uh, you know, analysis about what exactly country by country. That's, we, that's when we can figure out. We got to go deeper here then. Of course. I think a good place now, if someone wants some good data, I think Robert Pape from the University of Chicago, funded by the Pentagon, has a complete database on terrorism. And he said, he said, when drone attacks go up, suicide bombing goes up. When American troops go in, does any country, and primarily in the Muslim countries, under democracy and spreading liberalism and spreading the rainbow pride and all this alphabet movement, then you have, according to Robert, Pape, terrorist expert from the University of Chicago, he says bombing goes up. So there's a connection between terrorism and war are connected. This is the phenomenon here. Mm -hmm. So when he talks about not before these drone attacks, before these suicide bombings weren't happening until the drones, until the invasions, until the occupying forces coming in, Robert T Pape terrorism expert, University of Chicago, funded by the Pentagon, he says Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, they weren't having this type of violence and the suicide before this. Before 2003, not a single suicide bombing in the history of Iraq. Repeat that. Before 2003, not a single suicide bombing in the history of Iraq. What do you think happened in 2003? in the context of what did U.S. do to Iraq? You had the, uh, the lie that... Yes, and that led to the occupation. Yes. Yes, so occupation is directly connected with acts of uh, suicide bombing and terrorism, splitting off of the fractions, uh, you know, the, the culture, yeah. the people, the country, the resources. So, you know, not only Robert Pepe, by the way, many, many such, uh, you know, scholars, they have said, that the reason people are angry up there, the reason there is violence up there, the reason there is extremism and uh, all kinds of you know, violence, number one reason is that occupation, occupation. And this was a, many called it because you had, and again, uh, just being fair, we could say this was Christian terrorism. We're not gonna do that 
It yeah. wouldn't be fair, but you can make a case there because George Bush was a Christian. She goes on to say, quote, Gog and Magog are at work in the Middle East. Biblical prophecies are being fulfilled. This confrontation is willed by God, who wants to use this conflict to erase his people's enemies before a new age begins, end quote. And was on some kind of crusade. To launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of this crusade. <laughs> this, 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 this. This crusade, this crusade. You had on the, um, did you see some of those shells, some Bible verses and... Including this one used to train soldiers in Iraq, contain a secret coded reference to New Testament passages about Jesus Christ. Other sites have references to the New Testament books of Matthew, Revelation, and Corinthians, the face of Jesus Christ. The rifle sites are produced by the Trigicon Company of Wixom, Michigan which has almost a billion dollars in Pentagon contracts. The presence of the New Testament references seem well known, as this gun reviewer pointed out the passage from the book of John. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, yes, Trigicon, those guys are Christians, and, um, you know, they're, they're just, uh, in all of their different sites, they have verses on there. So, just a little neat side note. For those of you who aren't Christians, well, you know, whatever, get over it. Uh, the rifle was referred to as the spiritually transformed firearm of Jesus Christ. The biblical references on the rifle sites is only the latest example of a clash in the U.S. military over Christian symbols and preaching in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now the tiny biblical codes on the U.S. military rifle sites used by the Army and the Marines, as tiny as they are, seem certain to raise the issues again. Whatever else, you know, they would have yeah, yeah. Uh, Christians coming together of the Army units and praying and whatnot. We're not talking about a few fringe guys, a few marginal characters. These were top commanders in the U.S. military, openly flouting the First Amendment, uh, openly expressing contempt for other religious traditions, uh, and openly talking about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan as, uh, as uh, Lieutenant General Bruce Pfister puts it, a spiritual war of the highest magnitude. And they were doing this on the record. Influence of evangelical Christianity within the ranks of the U.S. military. How deep does it go? They see themselves as on a mission that is merging God with American power. They're looking at the mission of the United States military as very literally fighting a crusade. It's not a metaphor for them. They believe that they are in a, a spiritual battle that is equated to a physical battles. One uh, officer told me, he says, there's angels and there's demons, and we are fighting demons. So if you had certain people who are of the Muslim faith, and Muslim is one who simply sum surrenders and submits to the creator of the heavens and the earth, one God, Islam means his submission to the one God. If you had soldiers in uniform who are calling upon Jesus. Now let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, just come to you in prayer. They were on a mission, but it appears it was not just a military one. United in prayer, a group of evangelical Christians inside Bagram one of the biggest U.S. bases in Afghanistan. On the floor of the room, two sets of Bibles. The blue ones in Pashtu, the green copies in Dari, the two main languages in this deeply conservative Islamic society. Bible and making prayers, you say hey, they're Christian, so they're committing Christian terrorism. Right? We're not doing we're not saying that, but you can make a case for that. Of course, we can make a case. Filmmaker Hughes recorded US Army chaplain Gary Hensley in a provocative sermon at Bagram Air Base. You know, special the special forces guys, they hunt men, basically. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing as Christians. We hunt people for Jesus. But we should not, we cannot. Hmm. Because that's not just, you know, we cannot uh, blame Bible or Christianity or Jesus peace be upon him uh, for the acts of violence done in the name of Christianity or done by the Christians. You know, two quick examples I can give Brother Eddie. The data that he showed by the French think tank, 39% violence this year to this year done by the Muslims. If you look at from an objective way, from the factual way, right? From mm -hmm. any data that you can look at it, the number one, uh, you know, acts of terrorism that I can say or the most number of civilians killed in the last century, they were done by who? 
which countries muslim countries or non muslim countries world war 1 close to 19 million civilians wow they died or they were killed actually be, uh, fighting between the christian countries due to the fighting between christian countries 54 uh, christian 54 million not 54 54 million civilians non combatants they were killed because of the war right after the second world war between the christian countries so are we going to say that christianity is the most violent faith because they have killed like you know 100 million people even though that's a fact but we don't blame christianity or the bible or jesus peace be upon him we blame those christians and their geopolitical situation mm -hmm. so in the same way in case if you see some muslims in some countries because of the occupation now people are angry and now it's a proxy war in that proxy war people are getting killed we cannot blame islam or the muslim culture or prophet muhammad peace be upon him we blame those foreign powers and those misguided muslims if you look at and this is what robert pape university of chicago funded by the pentagon terrorist expert look him up he talks about this is geopolitical he says yeah. nothing to do with islam so you can't call this islamic terrorism that's the thing that i want patrick says an open mind i believe you do and people can be misinformed i think you're getting a different perspective him and charlie kirk i look forward to have connected also with uh, charlie cook kirk and i think him also people can get information it could be the wrong information they don't sit that's why it's important to sit with the muslims to talk to go ahead and open your mind and and get the other perspective and and other facts that you might not have uh, come across you might not have looked into this is very important what about the war and europe this is the greatest genocide after world war 2 mm -hmm. and you can clearly see they were blessing again with, uh, with all respect and if you like patrick said if your mind is on open if you're stubborn if you're not looking to um as the wise man said the the mind if it's not open like a parachute you know what i mean you got to go ahead and to get it work right it's got to be open otherwise it's not going to work so yeah. uh we're respectfully bringing these things up not to be like i got you here got you there but to give that broader perspective bosnia you had what's called the 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 chetniks you had their guns being blessed by the orthodox priests they came in and they did a slaughter and we're not going to blame all serbs it's not going that's not the right thing to do but you had they we we're not going to blame blame christianity mm -hmm. but the, uh, slobodan milosevic look him up patrick uh look at uh, radovan karavic they were in the church they were with the priests getting the guns blessed and they did a massacre under the un protection the people came srebrenica and they thought they were in a safe zone next thing you know even the un yeah. they left them women and children women raped it was a massacre it 60, was it 000. was uh, over 8000 there's still it just passed july 11th uh, every year new bones remnants are found and they're doing the janazas the burials yeah, yeah. not that's just one part of bosnia i mean you had like and you know what if you look at it if you look at go and do your research all the masjids the mosques were destroyed they were brought down to the ground but the muslims look this up patrick the mosques the churches were left untouched look at this standing behind a catholic, catholic church, church yes. catholic church one interesting thing is that is this true that during the war this was the greatest genocide that had happened after world war II here and pretty much uh we don't blame christianity even though it was a crusade against muslims but we don't blame christianity even though it was hijacked at that time but that's just an interesting point but another even more interesting point is that muslims executing the teachings of islam and prophet muhammad's orders you will not have seen if they weren't following islam islam preserved this church is that right that's right like in sarajevo i don't know the number of the churches how, how many churches are in sarajevo but uh, not a single one during the three and a half years occupation of sarajevo was destroyed this is the main church of sarajevo it's in downtown like the street downtown area uh, the only thing that that got uh, it, it wasn't destroyed but uh the the grenades from the from the serbian side that that 
dropped thousands, over 500,000 grenades dropped during the three and a half years. And uh, the, the, the only damage, it, it got the churches from those grenades. So not, not a single church was destroyed or, or uh, anything by, by the Muslim side, by the Bosnians. So before the Geneva Convention Code, there was the mercy that the Creator sent through the mercy to mankind, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who said, don't kill in the innocent non-combatants. Now when you're fighting in combat, you know, what are you going to send a guy, you know, a love letter? No, you're in combat against an enemy, self-defense. But we're talking about now the places of worship, they're off limits. So unlike others who are just destroying, demolishing mosques, and houses of worship, Islam forbids that. And that's why this is we're, we're able to stand in front of a church right here and witness that. And we just heard the bell, right? Yes, also. the bell was right there. And it's been all the time during the war, the bell was here. And uh, like I said, not a single church was destroyed or damaged by the Bosnians, by the Muslims during the war. There's also 50 meter, meters down there, there's a Serbian Orthodox church. Uh, the Serbs occupied the town. It was occupied for three and a half years. And uh, the church in downtown Sarajevo wasn't touched by the Muslims, by the Bosnians, because the church didn't occupy the, 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 the city, the, the military, the army, the Serbian army did. By the Muslims. By the Muslims. That's important. That's important for the viewers to know. It's haram. It is forbidden, extremely forbidden in Islam to destroy places of worship. Look at that. Did you know that? Yes. And Muslims, it doesn't matter which geopolitical situation that you are in, even in the extremes of war, we still protect the churches, the synagogues, and places of worship. Mm -hmm. And that is real Islam, actually. So one more example I was going to give is, you know, when people, when they bring this data about Muslims are, you know, violent and uh, angry and all of that, I think some part of the video mentions yeah. that, you know, it's important for us not to lump all the two billion Muslims into one bucket. We are not monolithic. So I would divide them into three different buckets or three different categories. The first one would be Muslims as minorities like you and me living in non-Muslim countries. May that be Europe as continent, Australia, right over here in the USA, Canada. The second set of Muslims, I would say, are Muslims um, living in majority Muslim countries in which no war is going on. Okay, got it? The third category and the last category is Muslims in which uh, Muslim majority countries in which war is going on. So let's take a look at the very first one. Muslims as minority like USA uh, living in a non-Muslim predominantly this country. Muslims are a model community in this country. Why? Because according to the survey, we are the most charitable people. Right. You heard that, right? Yes. Absolutely. Last year, two years ago. Well. We are a model community, Muslims, right? We have the same Quran, Muslims. We are one of the most highly educated people. We are the most diverse people. We are the most uh, people having the most positive and peaceful impact on the society. So when we look at from uh, those uh, metrics, we are a model community, the Muslims. When we take a look at the Muslims, majority Muslim countries in which no war is going on, Indonesia, Turkey, Malaysia, right, those countries, they are also model Muslim countries. The Jews, the Christians, even the Hindus, the atheists, they are living in with the peace and harmony, with no oppression, but living under justice. It is only the third category of the Muslims living in a Muslim predominant country in which war is imposed. Foreign occupiers are there. Even when the foreign occupiers, when they left, they impose the dictators on it. So because of that oppression, Muslims are angry. I would be angry. You should be angry, right? I mean, when um, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, 1945 or so, U.S. became angry. And then what did they do? They went and they did uh, what? Hiroshima, Nagasaki, 300,000 innocent people died. So anger can be justified at some times. And not every anger is negative. Important. I'm, I'm angry at all the oppression going on. You should be angry, right? Patrick should be angry. Uh, I'm angry at Shaitan, for example. I'm angry at uh, all the pedophiles. I'm angry at, at all the drug dealers. So anger is not always a negative emotion. So when the video says, you know what, Muslims are the angriest of all the people, I mean, in the later segment, yes. uh, then we have to look at the cause of the anger. 
because by itself if you bring the aspect that muslims are angry that's incomplete incomplete yeah. data you have to look at why are muslims angry or some muslims i should say right uh because of oppression maybe the drone missiles maybe the proxy wars maybe the dictators and the oppression going on right those segment of muslims you know i was before this show i was looking at some data americans our fellow americans are angry at so many things over here okay they're angry at uh, the healthcare system the economic system uh the political system correct educational system in which parents are taken away f- their rights from how to educate their children so us every single p- uh, member of the us every single citizen we are angry at certain uh you know part of the us government just because we are angry we cannot conclude anything from it it's incomplete we have to look at the reason for the anger so that's the whole point brother patrick if you look at other statistics if you look at and before i get into those real quick i mean you can think why would people be angry and the countries that he listed were pretty much bombed back into the stone age like iraq yeah. afghanistan they were invaded imagine people coming from china over here and they want to spread communism they want to spread their belief system to us you wouldn't be happy with that would you you'd be upset you'd be angry rightfully so human nature <laughs> it's human nature so you're coming over here based on a lie it was a lie weapons of mass destruction now it's uncovered the main reason we went into iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction it turns out he didn't <laughs> <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> When are you going to apologize for the million Iraqis that are dead because you lied? You lied about weapons of mass destruction. You lied about connections to 9/11. You lied about Iraq being a threat. You sent me to Iraq. You sent me to Iraq in 2003. My friends are dead. Just in the field. You you killed people. You lied. You lied about WMD. And you go over there, you kill the people, you blow them back into the stone age, and you create this unrest. W- what do you think? And then you pass on, you know, then you start putting up uh you try to put up uh these uh rainbow flags and you know the porn, the satellite, the porn you're spreading, liberal the secularism and this that a way of life that the people don't want. Yeah, yeah. And of now course, uh, people uh there's a great documentary called Dirty Wars. You know, you got people in these caves eating real food, you know, family and they're hanging out and next you know a drone from 10,000 miles away, 10,000 miles uh 10,000 feet up in the air, boom, and now this man, this family, this wife and husband, uh they brought up their child about to get married and you just destroyed their their life and how many of these have have, have yeah. happened in Afghanistan in in Iraq and Pakistan and Pakistan and all these other places so it's 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 interesting that these are the places where these statistics where now it's like for example you come in and someone comes to your house Patrick imagine this and uh, to your neighborhood to your house and the crook and the criminal comes in beats up your family and takes all your possessions turns things upside down and then when you go to you know defend yourself now they say oh now now they use you as the the violent one right violent the, and angry the, and angry you know, violent <laughs> extreme <laughs> extremist <laughs> come on man right you know, so one of the ways that i would advise uh, brother patrick and uh, you know charlie who was there in the show and anyone else you know unbiased viewers we need to compare apples to apples mm-hmm. so the way that i would say brother eddy to compare okay let's compare a us in which no war is going on in the mainland right good po- good point yeah no war is going on okay let's compare that to a muslim majority country like turkey in which no war is going on in the mainland how about qatar qatar also dubai have, go yeah. ahead uh, indonesia malaysia indonesia, right? right so let's for the sake of argument us comparing it to turkey mm-hmm. all right so i have the data over here so when it comes to uh, when it comes to drugs uh us has seven times more drug dealing compared to turkey all right when it comes to uh, murder rate five times more compared to turkey all right when it comes to the rate of rapes the rate of assaults the rate of uh, you know pornography the rate of uh, oppression 
every single metric that you can look at, US is many times more than Turkey. And I bet apple look, to apple. How about if you do the same thing? Qatar is one of the safest places to live. Yes. And also Dubai, very they are high on the statistics. Uh, of, and this is a majority Muslim country. Malaysia, sa- these are s- the safest places in the world to live. Medina was rated for women one of the safe these w- safest places in the world. You know this statistic, really? Right? That's Medina. Good. Yes. Yeah, I think I will show that Medina, mm-hmm. and this is the the, the heart. Of Islam here. So this data, if anyone goes to nationmaster.com, right? It's a good website, and the data in there is compiled by the UN, by the CIA, by the FBI. So this kind of you know quote unquote credible data. So if anyone go to nationmaster.com, and then you can do the search by the metric of assaults, uh, robbery, rapes, right? Drug dealing, homicide, suicide. And they compare 200 countries almost all the time for all of these different metrics. The non Muslims country they rank the highest. Mm-hmm. Of all the countries, the non Muslim countries are ranked the highest in all of these, you know, unfortunate data. Yeah, so what do we conclude? Do we blame Christianity for it, or do we blame that culture, that geopolitical situation? Because it goes back to where we started. Yes. G- it's a Ju- if it's a Judeo Christian nation, mm-hmm. what's it producing? And at go. the end of the day, if all it's just through the roof, crime is through the roof. You got uh, mother coming home just recently. This is happening all over the place. Did you know this is a, a, a actually a Muslim woman in hijab? She was coming home, and then guys come up, take her purse. Husband comes out. Did you see this one? This was in Skok- Skokie, in Chicago. But anyways, yeah. I mean theft is just through the roof. Islam has the solutions. Amputation after the four people have been fed, the zakat has been implemented. And when, when Islam, when actually, if you look at the Islamic history, when Islam was actually implemented, they were looking for who to give money to. They were, everybody yes. was taken care of. Yes, in the time of uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, 1717 until 1719 approximately, people went out to give money to the poor, the, the zakat money, which is an obligation for Muslims to give. And they knocked at the doors, and everyone opened the door and said, we don't want it, we are content, <laughs> we have enough. Right? Imagine over here, even before we approach somebody, people are going to take away yeah. and run with the money. <laughs> right? it's, uh, you, That's you, what Islam produced. You, you, you go through some cities, some neighborhoods in Chicago, Gary, Indiana, Chicago. I mean, if, imagine if you took just a portion of that money that you're spending over here with the, with the, the wars, the war machine, and going into other countries and bombing and drones and all that. If you invested that here, imagine. How yeah. many? How how much of the problems you can go ahead? Homeless people. I mean, you got people defecating in the street, in California and other places. Uh, homeless. Mm-hmm. The the homeless situation is just through the roof. So I think the best. And, thing and we the, can't just yeah. sorry. sorry and, and are we going to blame Christianity on that? Say this is uh, you know, Christians are now uh, this is the Christian terrorism because of that and not no. So it goes back to mm-hmm. th- what we started. It's not fair to call this Islamic terrorism and Islam is producing all these angry people. Is Islam is it Christianity and the, the Jail Christian nation now because of it is now it's this is because of that that this is being produced the fruits of it. We can say the same thing about South America, predominantly a Catholic continent, predominantly right in which education is like really low, people are dropping off from high school, marriages are, uh, you know, been breaking up, uh, drug abuse is rampant up there, uh, so unemployment is rampant, homicide is going on, right, you know, really high. So we cannot blame Catholicism or the Bible uh, for the state of affairs in the South America. So in the same way, it's not fair for anyone to look at Middle East or some Muslim countries, some population and say, you know what, how come they are extremists? How come they are angry? How come there is terrorism? We have to look at it from a bigger perspective, look at the causes for it. Looking at the causes does not mean we are justifying it. This is so important, Brother Eddie. People may be thinking, you know what, you guys are just playing a, a victim card. You're justifying it. No, we are not. Even if Muslims are oppressed, they cannot go and oppress other people. Because the Quran itself says, saving one innocent life is like saving the life of all of humanity. And taking one innocent life is like taking the life of all of humanity, right? Mm-hmm. Chapter 5, verse 32 and onwards. So, uh, so, so the way that we can conclude this is going back to Islamic sources. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is culture. Here is uh, the Muslims, uh, fallible Muslims, right? 
Uh, they are product of their culture, and then you have the perfect, peaceful, a blessed faith of Islam. And actually, in these places, you have, again, with the porn being brought in, this is all under the secularism, liberalism, and now actually that's what it's producing. It's the same culture from here. You're pushing it over there, yeah. and this is causing the problems. True. Uh, and now now we have all of this um, this disaster. But if you look at Dr. Sabil, I want to go back to this where Charlie Kirk, uh, he went and he mentioned something, and hopefully when he, we sit and he sits with Muslims, hopefully they can uh, invite us on, we can talk and get to the bottom of a lot of these things and get a different perspective, a lot of, a lot of even history. You got to like, they don't teach you this stuff in school. They don't, and they should, they don't. <laughs> they don't, uh, but it, they, I, was, um, I posted something, I tweeted something, there was this uh, professor, American professor, and he was teaching some of the stuff that we're talking about, about when Muslims came in, and, and I'll talk about, touch upon this more, when they came in and they, they conquered certain areas, you know, how they went and the, the justice that was, uh, that was established. And because Christians who were being oppressed, they wanted the Muslims to come in Many and to liberate. Times. Now, this point, how would you deal with this? And we can get into more what I, uh, on what I'm talking about, where he, he said that um, Muhammad, and we love Jesus, yes. but he said also, peace be upon him, he said because Jesus is peaceful and Muhammad is violent. That's why the Muslims are violent. One of the reasons they, they tend to be a violent people too is because their prophet was a very violent person. Christ was not, right? How would you go ahead and address that? Well, first and foremost, we need to correct their statement. And we say, Jesus, peace be upon him, he was peaceful. He was the prince of peace. Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the prophets, they were prince of peace. And obviously we need to uh, look into the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him, compared to the really short ministry of Jesus, right? Peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. So the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his ministry, his prophethood, it spanned from the year 610 all the way to the year 632. So during that time, when he was peacefully preaching to the Meccans, you know, oppressed by the people, Muslims are getting killed, but still, not a single bullet, not a single gun or sword was raised. However, when they came after his life and then the life of uh, the believers and they finally kicked him out, it is a God-given right for every single, uh, you know, human to defend themselves. So in that self-defense, many wars were fought by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Islam is a peaceful faith. It is not a pacifist faith. Mm. means Islam is a practical faith. You know, I mean, I can ask any person who is watching over here, what would you do? 2 a.m. in the morning and knock at the door. You see from the hole and you see that, you know, people are out there with uh, chains, with knives and with guns. What are we going to do? We'll pick up the baseball bat. We have an alarm system. We'll, uh, you know, press the alarm. We'll call 911. Obviously, we will defend our honor of our family, our you know, wife, our children, our property. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had that many wars with the people who came to destroy Islam and the Muslims, every single one of them. So in that context, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he picked up weapons ordered by the Creator the same way Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. The same way prophets of the Old Testament, they picked up weapons to fight the enemy. So in that context, we say Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the Prince of Peace, but he was a practical person. He was a person he wanted to show by example, don't just, you know, be chicken and, uh, you know, be sheep and let violence and people oppress you. Be a man, stand up for your rights, protect your women, your girls, your family and your honor. So that is a prophet, the prophet of practicality, the blessings for humanity. And he showed us in every circumstances how to live in God's guidance and how to better the society with God's guidance. Uh, jihad, uh, jihad, the struggling now because this is what people usually attack and they say this is violent and they don't even know that it doesn't mean holy war. Uh, the, the, it's a just war. Mm -hmm. Even before the Geneva Convention came out, you know, to preserve decent values, freedom to worship, protection of, of monastery, churches, mosques. Jihad is a quest for justice and peace. And it's not fair that you put Jesus in a s situation trying to compare to Muhammad, because this is what you said. He wasn't given political power. Yeah. But if you compare him to Moses, for example, there you go. what happened when Moses came 
back and the people are worshiping the calf and just in one shot what was it 3000 people mm-hmm. were ex- yeah. were executed so now do we discredit Moses from being a, a prophet if you compare all of the violence that was there and if you look at prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him i ask them to look at they can do this homework how many people actually died through all of these different battles that happened how many people actually died in those battles altogether how many people actually died by muhammad uh, peace be and blessings be upon him his sword right yeah. you would think you know they praise people like alexander the great and they you know all these different figures and but if you look at prophet muhammad and he came in after being tortured after the robbing the looting that they took from them and all the oppression the conquest of mecca when he came back 10,000 strong can you imagine that look imagine this patrick charlie all the christians and all the people out there just read about this this uh, magnanimous thing that he did forgiving those who did the worst atrocities to your followers to your family and he actually came in not as pumping his chest but humble with his head down saying yeah. spread the peace spread salams mm-hmm. spread the food spread the peace who does that so the what brother eddie is saying is that you know the people who tortured the prophet peace be upon him kicked him out from his homeland you know makka killed several of the believers took away the property so when prophet muhammad peace be upon him when he came back to makka from medina with 10000 of his soldiers and now the prophet and his people has the upper hand and then he asked his people right the people who used to torture him the prophet asked here them <coughs> what do you think i am going to do to you and they said you are our brother we expect the best from you and then he said today all of you are forgiven that is the prince of peace that is the person who we can learn from aspect of mercy and forgiveness and love and empathy that's yes. amazing and you but you can you can play that game and you can go ahead and again um that's not the agenda here we're not trying to do that but many people end up playing this game but you can come back and say and quote certain verses where Jesus said look of my enemies who wish to not not reign over them bring mm-hmm. them here and slay them in front of me right i came to divide mm-hmm. father from my, you can you can go ahead and bring certain things but you can also talk about when he comes back there you go what's going to happen He said he's going to establish Sharia, God's law. Yes. What did he say? And then he's going to come back and kill all the infidels, means the non-Christians. Oh, right? And it, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just using that language. That's what Revelation, the last book of the Bible says when Jesus comes back, every non-believer means non-Christians they would be done with. Mhm. So is that the prince of peace? We say yes, he's still the prince of peace even when he comes in the second coming. you know we would say he is going to follow the sharia allah's guidance he will follow prophet muhammad peace be upon him he will humbly pray with forehead on the ground worshiping the creator and rule with justice and peace all over the world mhm that was another thing that uh, charlie in the episode that i addressed he mentioned that the reason that many christians they believe because muslims they want to come in and establish sharia i share some of this right belief that radical muslims want to bring sharia to the united states and we often you often say that sh- sharia is already here it's here how is that me smiling at all of you and you we are following the sharia uh very soon we are going to pray the f- third prayer of the day which is part of the sharia in us we are practicing sharia if i go to chicago downtown and give 5 dollars or food to a poor person i am following sharia If I go home and take care of my parents I am following sharia if I'm going up in the morning and uh, you know working to get a, a food on the table I am following sharia if I'm being nice to women not objectifying them I'm following sharia if I am uh, having rallies against racism in this country I am following sharia or if you're uniting now for a common good like Patrick wants mm-hmm. to do and Charlie wants to do on a common platform common good to unite against the sexualization of the children you're following god's laws sharia sharia yes <laughs> and as we have said many times in the past sharia is there in the old testament new testament jihad started from the old testament right 
Moses and David and Solomon and all these prophets, they fought jihad. Jihad means they are struggling to establish God's guidance to rule with justice, morality, and unity in those lands. That is jihad. Mm -hmm. So jihad is there in the Old Testament. Sharia is there all over the Bible. Patrick mentions a uh, few more things before we conclude. He mentioned in his video here why, uh, what, which prophet they believe in. So he talked about Jesus or Muhammad. Maybe these guys have a lot more in common except who they believe is their prophet, Jesus or Muhammad. But this is something that we believe in both. Yes, it's not either or. It's not either so or. So they're not mutually exclusive. It is both. Maybe for some other time we can mention later on the prophecies about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So if you actually believe in the Bible, you have to take Muhammad, peace be upon him, also as a prophet, also as a last prophet. So if you read the Quran, and I advise every single viewer, especially Patrick and Charlie and all of you, to read the Quran, uh, the Quran does mention with high honor uh, Jesus and Moses and all the prophets. If you read the Bible and the prophecies in there, there are prophecies about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. For that reason, uh, Jews and the Christians of the past, they started to live in Medina awaiting that prophet. And when he came, some of them, they embraced the faith of Islam. So it's not either or, both of them, they are sent by the Creator. They both were the prophets. They both perform miracles by Allah's power. They both invited people to worship the one creator. And just like they invited people to worship the one creator and not uh, the creation, we invite our viewers to read the Quran and worship the creator and not the creation. That's the way, Brother Eddie, right? To establish justice and peace and unity and morality in the world. And then what is the reward in the hereafter? Paradise. Eternal paradise. Yeah. Why wow, you just got me thinking about okay. when you talk about Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, uh, just uh, it's amazing. You mentioned the Quran, we're not killing one innocent being, it's non combatants, like you know, killing all of humanity. The rules of engagement are really clear in Islam. You cannot go yeah. and kill innocent men, women, and children, non combatants. So, so we covered this whole Islamic terrorism thing. Let's so let, I want to make that clear. Hopefully, he can pull back from that. Uh, after we gave some examples of what we can make a case for Christian terrorism and you can see where now this is a false stereotype and this is something that with the proof and evidences and the proper data and everything this gets pretty much debunked uh, now moving on a love for Jesus the commonalities now and he did that video of what Christians and Muslims have in common we have so much in common yeah and when you mentioned Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him uh, it, it, it reminded me, uh, even in the Bible, and this is a whole different topic, but um, Isaiah 29, 12, when the book is given to the one who has not learned, talking about Prophet Muhammad. So you have prophecies of Prophet Muhammad actually in the Bible. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, so much that we can talk about. These are things that we can go ahead and, and make a strong case for the pure monotheism and the message of Jesus, why we believe he's a prophet, because he was called a prophet in the Bible. Is that, he, he was called a prophet, prophet from Nazareth, correct? You mean Jesus, right? Jesus, peace Yeah, yeah. many Be times. Yeah. Matthew 13, 57, yeah. Luke 13, 33, you know, Mark 6, 4, John 4, 44. I many places. When he performed miracles, people did not say, you know, that is God, that's son of God. They said, that's a prophet. Yeah, there's two. There's so many things, so many topics. These go, we can go deeper into these, and it'll be very interesting to come on and discuss these things. And um, this thing about Muslims, you know, when Christians hear that, and I had Christians come on, and when they went from being complete Islamophobes, hating Muslims and Islam, and they were like, why do we hate these Muslims? When they say Jesus, they say peace be upon them. But then there's another group of people that they believe his mother was a... Uh, the, a what do you call someone who has uh, sex out of wedlock? They disrespect mm -hmm. her. They disrespect Jesus. Peace be upon. Him. They call him all slanderous names and evil names. We're over here. You can go to the hellfire if you disrespect Jesus Islam. Is this correct? Exactly. So you've heard me say it. I'm not making this stuff up. Not only you disrespect, even if you don't believe that Jesus was a prophet, 
you are nullifying one of the articles of faith mm -hmm. we have to believe in him and all the prophets so if you before so if you compare all the things that we have in common now and this is where we'll, we'll finish it off where the uniting now against the sexualization of the children you know the pushing of this agenda chopping off good healthy body parts and whatnot that obviously we're on the same page here uniting on uh, would you be interested now do you think now you have a big reach i have a big reach would you be interested in collaborating with people like charlie uh, kurt and uh, patrick and david they're actually doing some good work they're go traveling i think to california to go ahead and to see other parents who are also on the same page if the muslim community knew more about this and you think through your message and other muslims that this is something that they would want to be a part of i know that's a really good point uh, that we want our youth our children to be protected yeah. from what is going on in the public school especially and in the popular culture so i think on that point on that value on that commonality that we have i would really urge charlie and patrick you know and uh, others out there like-minded let's come together let's have a chat and let's work out a strategy how we can uh, at least uh, unite on that front so uh, inshallah god willing as we say we are at least protecting the children and then we can at least say later on that we did something and that's one of the important sunnas means one of the examples of prophet muhammad peace be upon him that uh, you know even before he was 40 years of age him along with the uh, Christians and the Jews and the idol worshippers, they came together for the common uh, cause of removing the oppression from the society. So God loves that, the Prophet, he loved it. And if we do it, inshallah, we are also following the Sunnah. That means we are coming on a common platform to uh, uh, remove the oppression, protect the children and please the Creator. Mm -hmm. Can you narrate the story of there was in Medina, in Mecca, you had the pact that was made? Yes. Can you talk about this pact? So also Muslims also see, because some Muslims, they don't actually know about this, but the Prophet ﷺ came together to fight against injustice and other things. Yes. Yeah, so, so what happened was, uh, so Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was in Medina. So in the city of Medina, there were merchants, you know, businesses, they were selling each other's goods and people used to come from different places and buy and sell. So one time it so happened that one of the merchants that came, one of the sellers, he came from outside of Medina and he was selling. So actually this was in Mecca. Mecca, yeah. He was in Mecca, right? So he was selling something and then he sold the goods, but the buyer refused to give him the money. And one of the prominent uh, Horesh person was the buyer. And then this uh, merchant, he was raising his voice, you know, uh, injustice is being done to me. Somebody help me. And nobody was helping. So when Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he heard about it, he said, you know what, something has to be done. So he called the people of different faiths, even the idol worshippers, and they said, let's have a pact called the pact of the righteous, the allegiance of the virtuous, mm -hmm. which is called as the hilful fudul. So they all came together, uh, knowing that they have theological differences, but there is something in commonality. They want to remove the oppression from the society. They came together, and because of that, they were able to reduce and remove the oppression. Society became better. Yeah. Common people, good-hearted people, despite their differences, coming on a common platform, we can do the same, inshallah, today. So to call Prophet Muhammad violent, peace and blessings be upon him, if he's fighting against someone who's trying to disrupt that peace and that justice, just like the police officer and just like the uh, person who's defending his family and his home, it's not correct to go ahead and call someone violent. Just like if Moses is going and doing something, uh, this is very important to put things in context. So if someone is still out there is talking about Prophet Muhammad is violent, look at, you have to go deeper and look at the context, why certain events happen, right? And we can go, mm -hmm. and this is something, again, <laughs> this is something to talk about. And this is why we're addressing this, that you can go ahead and freely ask certain questions. We can, we can go ahead and discuss certain topics and we can go ahead and and put it out there discuss it and see the different perspective and if your mind's open you're going to be like hold on i wasn't thinking about that that makes sense but you know when so really quickly then we can wrap up uh, yeah. especially to brother charlie over here you know god forbid if you're saying that prophet muhammad peace be upon him was a violent person 
how come he uh, he gave such honor to uh, mothers to the wives and the daughters paradise is under your mother's yes. feet yes if he were violence god forbid how come he said you know go and uh, help your neighbors if he were violent why did he forgive his enemies if he were violent why did he stop the infanticide if he were violent why did he uh, stop the intoxicants from the society if he were violent why did he remove uh, uh, racism from the society all of this matrix is not a person who is violent it's a person who is a prince of peace not only for 2 years but for all eternity that's muhammad peace be upon him. so we covered a lot a anything lot. else that uh, <laughs> you want to you want to mention well just at the end of the day right let's separate uh, the people from the peaceful faith of islam and if you want to know what islam is you know because i have read the bible i want to know who the christians are their holidays their theology right their history i read the bible and i bet many of our fellow christians the jews and the people of non muslim faith you may not have read the quran we can send you a free copy of the quran free of charge right no strings attached you can give us a call at 1-800-662 islam 1-800-662 islam or you can go to the website gainpeace.com spanish copy or english translation of the quran all right but uh, last but not the least to pray to the same creator the way that jesus used to pray for giving us guidance for giving us uh, the uh, the best in this world and for with god's mercy paradise in the hereafter so may god guide each one of you may god bless each one of you so we can live in peace and harmony as brothers and sisters so god by his mercy can put us into paradise amen beautiful i think we end with that we covered a lot and hopefully people with open minds to see your heart they can look at this and they can go ahead and make a better distinction between islam like you said and the actions of human beings who are fallible who make mistakes and you don't want to judge islam by the riff raff out there the same way you don't judge christianity by the riff raff and the criminals and whoever else so let's be fair let's be balanced and let's unite on goodness and we'll see you next time subscribe if you haven't already look forward to hearing from you mr patrick and let's make this a reality us coming together on a common platform to do some common good to protect the children and all the other things that are out there that we can go ahead and work on to make humanity a better place for all with that said peace be with you assalamu alaikum my name is sabil ahmed i have taught close to 15000 students from around the world i have a passion to teach i have a passion to travel i have a passion to also read and read and read the more i travel the more i find out that people have a thirst to learn about faith thirst to learn about islam but there are not many books like a one stop shop there are not many places so this course inshallah god willing as we say this is a one stop shop so you can learn islam not from some dilute sources not from the social media not from google it may be wrong it may be right but learn from muslims and learning from the authentic islamic sources so what this course is going to cover Not only we will cover the basics of Islam for example the six beliefs the five pillars you can also learn about the cultures the islamic and the muslim holidays some of the rituals and the practices maybe your friends your colleagues and your classmates may be doing you will be better informed and last but not the least we will learn some of the misunderstood concepts within Islam for example apostasy uh, sharia sunni and shia jihad women in islam these are all misunderstood concepts So together we can clarify what are the actual meanings of these important concepts. Hopefully by taking the course you will realize you know this is what the media is saying about those concepts but this is the reality coming from the Islamic sources. And lastly you will realize many things which are in common between people of faith between Islam and Judaism and the faith of Christianity. So we will realize that there are so many things in common and uh, the one of the purpose of this course is to build on those commonalities so we can work together to make better societies so let's embark to study the faith of 2 billion people see you in the class thank you